Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. A new militant group, Bayan Men, bombs oil facility in the Niger Delta barely 24 hours after they threatened to do so. Is it a fight for justice or an attempt to make money? We'll find out this morning. Internally displaced persons vacate camps in Borno State as the government begins a resettlement plan for them. We'll be talking about this. An aviation minister, Hadi Surike, announces new time for the launch of a national career after failed attempts in the past. It's April 2022. Well, glad to have you join us on The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. It's a very beautiful morning and thanks for joining us. I am Messi Bopo. As usual, we'll start off with our top trending. And uh, this morning, we head straight to Adamawa State, where uh, a House of Rep member has actually, that's been generating a lot of conversation in different spaces across the entire country, where you have 1,000 naira being given to, you know, um, students or people at the end of the day of a particular school in Adamawa State for scholarship. And, uh, you know, it calls for a lot of concern. Uh, I really don't know... A 1,000 Naira constituency project. Uh, do we call that a scholarship? I don't know what, you know, at this point we should, you know, begin to tag that as. Uh, Marcy, when I uh, read about <laughs> the, that particular story, I, I laughed because I, I, I couldn't quite understand uh, what the 1,000 Naira would do specifically in the lives of the students. Is it to buy them textbooks? Is it to buy them notebooks or just writing materials? Or just how far would that 1,000 Naira go? And it is even being termed as scholarship. I don't know if it's just uh, pocket money, uh, money uh, for transportation to get to school, or what exactly? I've not been able to get much details concerning that, but it was just all over social media yesterday. It was just a wash. Of social you you, media you, you, you know news. that's supposed to be, um, that's expected to be a constituency project, apparently. That's what I'm thinking in my mind. Well, oh, what would he term the project? That's what I'm even trying to understand. It's a project for your constituents, and at the end of the day, you're giving each child or each student a thousand naira. What for exactly? Scholarship, that's what it was for. Mercy, come on. No, but, but, but let's begin to look at it. You know, the issue of constituency project, oh. uh, you know, in our space is such a controversial issue. Now, let's not forget that, you know, Nigeria operates a bicameral, uh, bicameral legislative system. And therefore, you have two houses, uh, the Senate and the House of Representatives. At the end of the day, 360 members, uh, we get to elect them every other year. Now, the reason why you establish government is for the common good. There's been a lot of, uh, you know, controversy. I really do not know because it's not like it was stated that, you know, it's a constituency project. But I'm saying, you know, it could appear that that's a constituency project, right? Uh, but, you, but like I rightly mentioned, the controversy surrounding constituency project has been ongoing. Uh, if you look at the fact that uh, the constitution, however, uh, has not really, of course, the constitution uh, stipulates the framework checks and balances of organs of government and what have you. But uh, uh, right now, that's a lot because you have the argument where uh, some House of Rep members or lawmakers are saying our duty is just to identify this project. And then, you know, the National Assembly has been given, you know, the powers empowered by the Constitution uh, to, you know, disburse funds for this project to be why instituted. Should, why should the National Assembly even be dispersing funds? Or even be but, but that's what the Constitution says. So if you look because, at... Because if, it's, no, it's, it's, no, it's, it's not so like the National... Then. No, it's not like the National Assembly carries out this project. Okay. Uh, that's where the controversy, you know, starts from. The essence or the idea of constituency project is about, you know, democracy, what's, bringing what's, government closer to the people. the executive arm of government? So at this point now, th this is where the controversy lies. But I'm thinking that, you know, the more information that we have, the better questions we begin to ask, and then we get better results. So in this, in, in this particular, no, yes. okay, Even just, um, I'm actually uh, driving somewhere now. Okay. So in, in, in this particular point, so yeah. the, the case is this, 
the argument over time is this, that, you know, there's no specification. But this is what the Constitution says. So if you look at 1999, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, uh, Section 80, if I'm not mistaken, Section 2, Section 3, and thereabout, talks about the fact that, you know, um, the National Assembly has the rights, been given the powers to, uh, you know, disburse funds or give funds to the spending and right now, you also have all the lawmakers saying, oh, yes, our responsibility is just to identify this project. And then the executive arm of government is saddled with the responsibility of executing this project. Mm. Right. So you identify it and execute it. But my question is, uh, how many, because we're talking about 360 um, House of Rep members now yes, in data, are. and every four years we get to elect them. Uh, every time you have government is to ensure that, you know, development gets to the grassroots. Uh, for the common good of the people, providing public good and all of that. But that's not the case now, because I don't know what that 1,000 naira is for, but I'm just saying if that's a constituency project, it's entirely zero yes, um, yes, at this point yes, in time. Yes. But, you know, the whole argument still boils down to the fact that the constitution and the controversy, there's no uh, framework as I to get, get, everything I, that should I, I happen. I all of that mercy, fine. It is actually provided in sections of the constitution. But my, my issue right now, well, my qualms, as it were, is that is that what the members or the constituents actually need at that particular time? Fine, in as much as you have your constituency and you're allowed by constitution to you know identify uh, or maybe uh, execute whatever you're supposed to do. The fact is that you're giving each student a thousand. I don't know if that's the the core needs of that particular area. Uh, I'm sure it can't be the core needs. Oh, fine. They have ports. They have. They might have issues <laughs> that, with ports water, so, infrastructural development. Good. So why one thousand naira? I, so, I so, 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 like I mentioned, in, in the, like just like we're having this conversation now, yeah. I mentioned the fact that if you do not have information, if you are not aware, then you know you're not aware. They should not, you will not be asking the public. So, so it's, it's a two-way thing. Age. Is this some sort of stipend or just uh, to show that they are working or what? I don't even get it. I just need some sort of clarification. So I think it's a two-way thing. The question now would be if the people, the mm. governed now across the entire country, I mean, because at the end of the day, you, you find that, that uh, three, uh, you have a senator, one senator representing, you know, uh, a particular constituency, a senator representing, if I'm not mistaken, right? And the point is, are the people aware of, you know, what is expected of them do we understand what we should demand mm. the, the issue is we don't even know that, that we should be demanding xyz so that's where i'm coming from and maybe on the other hand too maybe these lawmakers are not also in the know that this is what is supposed to be and let's they even are say lawmakers the, and they're let, not let, in the know let's let's even say that um the, the you know because the argument over time would be oh the constitution has actually not stipulated who should implement it as is just to identify uh you know the issues and then monies mm. will be released the implementation would be solely uh, dependent on the executive arm of government. But the point is, uh, what's the level of awareness? The yeah. government and, you know, the ruled and the, the ones that are being ruled. So that, that's the big question here. And that's why we're not asking the right question. One would expect in the entire federation, how many constituency offices do we have? Because if you, you should have constituency office, at some point, I mean, resources have been uh, disbursed. It's part yeah. of the budget. It's supposed to be part of the budget at the state and at the federal level. It's been budgeted for. No, most of them, they actually do have a um, constituency project. And once in a while, they go to their various state and, uh, you know, uh, try to, you know, get to meet visitors to Ordinarily, it is about understanding what the peculiar needs of your constituents are. Try to be closer to them. So, so how, how do you them. understand the needs of your constituents when them, you don't have a constituency them, office? Most of them, no, that's, that's what I'm saying. Most of them actually do, but most of them hardly even get to go to those uh, uh, offices uh, all the time. So at the end of the day, they just... Uh, uh, do their <laughs> constituency product based on reports they get. From Which people. report? And that's why one would think that it's okay to, you know, give someone, uh, give people or students a, uh, a thousand, thousand naira and call that a scholarship. It's entirely embarrassing I feel, and disgraceful. It is, it is really I mean, I, I saw comments, a lot of comments that were being generated in that space. Very laughable ones. I saw. Uh, I saw. <laughs> laughable comments on, and, on, and then on someone was media. saying how do i tell my counterparts you know in the united kingdom that <laughs> a house of rep member is giving two dollar you know as a constituency <laughs> two dollars as a constituency project you know to Ooh, members it is of quite constituency. Something. all right uh, 
All right, fine. We understand that. Uh, before we take the next story, uh, it is about Nigeria and to take off in April, according to the Minister of Aviation, Harvey Sirica. But let's just uh, take some clips and we'll come back and discuss more about that. Stay with us. This is the sixth time that the memorandum appeared before council and sixth time got lucky to be passed by council. The very quick maybe perhaps structure of the proposed airline, the government will be owning not more than 5%, not more than 5%, below 5%. So 5% is the maximum equity that government will take. Then 46% will be owned by Nigerian entrepreneurs, 46%. So if you add that, it's 51%. So 51% the majority shareholding by Nigerians. And then 49% will be held by strategic equity partner or partners. All right, uh, Minister of Aviation, the heart is Surike outlining just how the takeoff would be uh, ahead of, uh, you know, April 2022. Indeed, we will be having another national carrier. I wonder what it is going to be named. Uh, Mercy, remember back in the day we had uh, the Nigeria Airways, we had Air Nigeria, and um, over time they all had to come to some wonderful crash. No, but you know, the argument with the fact that, you know, government is not a manager of any venture will still be very valid. Let's begin to ask yourself, how much are we fed? It's not about saying, oh, yes, we're going to. It's a brilliant idea, as brilliant as, it, as that sounds. But the issue of management would always be key. Yeah, and so yeah. because you, you have cases where um, I know of a lot of um, government-owned enterprises where it's been mismanaged. And then you constantly find that even government themselves, they get to use this. They don't pay. Okay, but, you don't but, pay but, for it. The sentiment... No, yeah. you know, it's okay to say all of that. I mean, we do a lot of talking. I mean, it's brilliant. All that the minister has said yeah. sounds very interesting and very good. But in this, in the, this time around, uh, specifically, it is not going to be... Uh federal government owned or managed from what we understand uh, uh, the federal government has just about 5% equity then international uh, partners have come to about 49 and of course uh, there are uh, I mean 46 that is then a 49% equity shares that will be sold to, to Nigeria so basically it is going to be uh, more like a public owned company so basically the uh, management of that particular airline will not just be by the government this time around. But you know, you, you know the might. The uh, no, of course, well, I do believe. <laughs> Where you just nodded. Uh, you, you know, because we have seen. I mean, if you look at uh, history, antecedent, you would begin to question a lot of things. It's okay to say yes, uh, public-private uh, partnership, the PPP, and what have you. Brilliant mm -hmm. as it is, but you know, when you come to the, to our context, you come to our environment. It feels like things are quite different, and so you begin to ask yourself: Will the federal might not begin to play, please? Will mm. the might of government not begin to play, please? At the end of the day, well, right? at, yes, at the end of the day, where somebody will show up and say, "Do you know who I am? Oh, I'm X Y Z." <laughs> Why do people not pay for stuff? <laughs> business is business, no sentiment. So at the end of the day. Uh, let's not even go into that conversation. All right, let me just give the federal government the benefit of a doubt. Uh, the, uh, though it has been approved by the Federal Executive Council, the federal government is hoping that about 70,000 um, jobs you know, will be uh, created by such um, a policy. It is uh, something that um, Nigerians uh, you know, might be looking forward to, because I try as much as possible to follow that particular sector, aviation. It is uh, completely capital intensive in as much as and the federal government has promised that uh, it is not going to be you know, putting all its uh, interest in that particular venture. We just want to believe that over time, you know, come April 2022, we, we would have a national carrier that we will be proud of. I don't know what they will term it this time around. Okay, other uh, uh, stories are, you know, trending. Is that of the German government trying to train or wanting to train the Nigeria police on uh, protests management? Yeah, it's brilliant. Uh, part of the reasons why, uh, or part of the reason why we had the protests, uh, the NSAS protests, if you look at it, is mm. about, you know, uh, the behavior of the Nigerian police force towards the people. So over time, this police brutality, it hasn't ended. It's, it's still there one year after. We're still talking about the same issue. We constantly see how 
you know, on a daily basis, we see how um, the, the police is engaging with the civil populace in a very, very, very sad way. So yes, I'm thinking it is something that we should embrace. We probably would not have been waiting, you know, for the uh, Germans to actually offer this. We should have actually gone ahead to make plans to have this training. Uh, part of the issues that those who are demanding for reform in, in the sector have been calling for. Reform the police. That's what it is. It has been like that. Let's, you know, do the training reorientation. We need to understand. I mean, it, it, it really, you know, makes me sometimes laugh when you hear that police is your friend. You know, police is your friend. How is police your friend? You, you have a gun and that can be very threatening. And every day, this is not hearsay. We encounter police officers. We see how they relate, the you business, know, yes. uh, with those who are not even, I mean, they're not armed. Mm. Let's not even, because if you're willing to delve into it, I'm sure that emotions will begin to pop up at the I end of the day. So, so I think that it's brilliant. We should accept it. But, you know, with us, it's another thing to have the training. It's another thing to do. To <laughs> if, I, if I want to begin to sound very spiritual now, you know, they say, um, the Bible would say you hear the word, you do the word. I'm not a preacher, but <laughs> I think I know the part of the Bible. And so it's the same thing as saying we have a lot of laws, but the issue with it is implementing it. So it's another thing to have this training. It's another thing to do the training is another thing to ensure that we have the framework and we have you know the environment that will ensure that we are doing what we should do it's a brilliant one i agree i couldn't agree uh, more with you mercy it is a good one it is topical it is timely you know, what in the wake of uh, you know the lagos Ensas report and uh, series of um, calls are for reformation of the Nigeria police force and uh, over time it's not just about just one of training or one of training that is uh, we need a uh, constant training you know retraining of the Nigeria police force then maybe someday over time you know they would get so indoctrinated with all that they have learned and be able to you know put to practice uh, so that Nigerians can actually have a police force that uh, they can be proud of there's this particular slogan with the Nigerian police being our friend, but hey, we all know that the average Nigerian policeman, you know, isn't so friendly. And um, I wouldn't want to call him my friend. So if they got the needed training uh, locally, internationally, I believe that over time, you know, somehow they might just begin to imbibe some of the things that... I'm also, thinking, I'm also thinking that, you know, uh, at this point in time, it's also a point where the Nigerian police should pay attention to that particular slogan. Let's begin to define <laughs> what a friend is. I mean, if I'm your friend, I would not want to extort you. I would not want to, you know, punch you and hit you and talk to you harshly. I'm sure I'll find a way to but communicate. You asked me to buy you breakfast the other day. That's not extortion, no? No, that's not extortion. <laughs> Did you actually buy me breakfast? You didn't. <laughs> All right, that's what's uh, trending uh, this morning across the various social media platforms. So we'll be taking a break and when we come back, we'll go off the press and see what the dailies are saying this morning. Do join us again.